Welcome everyone back to the channel and another broadcast. Today we are on Proverbs chapter 27. Um, please do check out the uh, podcast on the other 26. Uh, there's lots of information there. Um, really pleased you've joined us today, family. Let's get straight to it. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Let another man praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. A stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than both of them. Wrath is cruel and anger a torrent, but who is able to stand before yells? Now, this is direct revelation from the Son of God in heaven, uh, chapter 27. And the first verse is very self-explanatory. Um, and it speaks of the problem of mankind that men boast uh, about what they're going to do. In fact, humans boast about what they have and what they've done. Uh, it's because they want to establish their own right standing with God. But the truth is the only right standing with God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the blessed exchange that a sinner makes uh, to become a saint, to become a Christian, to become a Bible believer, uh, to become a follower of the Lord Jesus, um, rather than attempting to establish one's own righteousness. Uh, men have Christ as their righteousness. Uh, men have right standing through the finished work, the agonies and the death, burial, blood and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So men have Christ as their blessed surety, their blessed saviour, their king, their head, their judge and their lord and their master. So you see, Christian ground is entirely new ground, friends. You're clear of pagan ground and heathen ground and trying to establish your own self-righteousness like belief systems such as Catholicism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Mohammedanism and much of Hinduism is about establishing your own right standing with the source, with God. Uh, and that's what sets the truth apart. Uh, men have the Lord Jesus Christ uh, alone as their righteousness. Uh, that's what makes them Bible-believing Christians um, because um, no one is established on the principle of the law, principle of rules and regulations. Uh, it's repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that gives a human being eternal life. Now, Plans and ambitions. Many a man has not woken up today that had plans and ambitions going forward. The scripture says, when a man perishes, his plans and his ambitions come to nothing. Um, I guess this has to do with aspirations. I was thinking about this earlier, family. Do not boast about tomorrow um, and how human beings boast in what they have and what they've, what they've done uh, and what they're going to do. And um, that's because human beings are made in the image of the creator. Um, every human being is infinitely precious and infinitely valuable. Um, and so the desire to be creative, you know, we, we, we have music, arts, entertainment, uh, DIY, craft work, um, and many careers that are creative. And we draw a great uh, sense of purpose and connection and expression through these things. And there's nothing wrong with many of those things. Uh, but the idea is that day by day, uh, we can be subject to the Lord Jesus Christ and find peace and serenity and grace uh, or not. Um, reminds me of the scripture in the New Testament in the book of James, where it saith, um, 
say, if the Lord will, I will go here and go there, not, oh, I'm going to this, I'm going to do that. But if the Lord will, I will go here and go there and do this or do that. And whatsoever things you do, do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let another man praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. Well, that's connected with verse one. Um, and human beings seeking to establish their own self-righteousness, their own self-worth, their own self-esteem, um, congratulate themselves. Self-congratulatory and boastful um, without giving glory to God, uh, without giving glory to Christ Jesus, without giving honor to the King of Ages, the King of Nations and the King of Saints. Verse three, a stone is heavier, sand is weighty. Sand is weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than both of them. So the reason is you can't appease a fool's wrath. Um, now, the devil is the ultimate fool. Uh, a deluded angel, a deluded, damned and doomed, a fallen angel, the dragon, the serpent, the spent, the serpent. Uh, he is very angry, full of wrath, for he knows his doom is written. He knows that the pitch black bottomless abyss awaits him imminently. Um, and he knows that after that, he's released for a very short time. And then the lake of burning, furious, uh, wrathful brimstone in capital punishment is his portion so he's very angry and so he goes around doing evil things upon the earth corrupting men's minds into oppression murder and all kinds of wickedness wrath is cruel and anger a torrent but who is able to stand before jealousy well again this has to do with the the wicked one, the wicked one, um, he is jealous. He's jealous of God. He's jealous of Jesus Christ. He's jealous of the Lamb's wife, the bride, the church. But they are redeemed. They are pardoned. They are inheritors of eternal life. They will receive eternal, blissful, glorious, joyous peace eternally. Whereas he will burn in the lake of fiery torment forever. And so the question is, who is able to stand before jealousy? Now, etymology, which is the study of words and how words are made, is a very interesting topic. Um, but like looking into numbers, we don't get carried away about it. But I will just comment, I believe this is the first time on this particular word, um, all the devils, all the doomed, deluded, damned demons, they are all lousy, ye all lousy, right? Like a louse, they are wicked, uh, defiled, wretched, corrupt, wicked creatures. Now, uh, the, this is a very unusual thing, jealousy, because normally the natural mind thinks of it as something that's very, very bad. But actually, there is a, a verse of scripture that declares that God is jealous. God is a jealous God, the scripture says. So therefore, uh, it is not necessarily a bad thing. See, friends, we tend to think of things humanly with the natural reasoning. But from the divine perspective, the word broken down is, 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 is je is the French word for I, al is the Hebrew word for God, or is the inference of omnipotence and us. So God, the creator, is omnipotently the life in every human being. Yellows, yellows, yellows. 
and God also as well. It sounds like yellow, yellows, yellows. Uh, God preserves mankind in great bountiful, uh, covenantal and providential loving kindness uh, because his mercies endure forever. Uh, Christ is a merciful and faithful high priest. Even when men are faithless, God remains faithful. So it is God's loving kindness by which men are not consumed. Uh, it is God's patience through which mankind lives uh, at the present time. Um, mankind is alive uh, by grace, actually, specifically, by the patience of Jesus Christ upon the cross. That epochal moment, that wondrous uh, event 2,000 years ago in Israel is the reason why everyone's alive on the planet anywhere throughout all time and history, friends. That is the patience of God for mankind. There's no human that's ever walked this planet that did not receive life through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no human that's ever walked this sphere that did not walk this sphere by the grace and peace and mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. There's no human being that is not currently sustained by the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody lives by the grace of Christ Jesus. You think of Christ upon the cross, the atoning sacrifice, the blessed victim, the holy surety, the salvation of eternal. You think of Christ upon the tree, friends, standing as it were, nailed to a tree. Just as the brassy serpent was nailed to the rod of Moses and all mankind that had been bitten by serpents, which is all mankind. When they looked to the brassy serpent lifted aloft upon the staff of Moses, behold, they were healed and the venom came out of them and they were made whole. And so it is, friends with those that look to the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross. Have you eaten the fruit of that tree, friends? As thou presented thyself under that tree, we're now in the end of November and the world and people of the world, they're all rushing after their materialistic, drunken, uh, uh, promiscuous, uh, divorce and debt-laden festival to the devil. Uh, uh, the, the Christianized pagan uh, moon feast uh, of December uh, 25 and they, they're all thinking about what they can do to appease themselves and their greedy unsatisfied lust for drunkenness and material things uh, oh yes But I tell you the truth, friends, there's one tree that you must all be present underneath. And there is one tree under which you are all present underneath. A gift from God to the Lord Jesus Christ. Be cleansed of the blood of the Christ of Calvary upon that tree for all of thee, friends. Have faith in the death of Christ. Friends, I must identify with the Son of God upon the tree for thee. I must identify with the Son of God in the tomb, all thy sins buried there. I must identify with Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ, out of the tomb in resurrection. The rock of ages out of the freshly hewn rocky tomb, the rock rolled from the door and out he came in glory and majesty and splendor. He raised himself up. No one took his life from him, friends. He chose to lay his life down. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the majesty on high.
What a mighty Christ. What a mighty God. The mystery, friends, of deity incarnate. The mystery of the Lord Jesus Christ, the ancient of days, the father of eternity, the king of the whole universe, the king of the whole earth, the king of all mankind, friends. The sovereign, self-existent, potentate incarnate. What a person. What a saviour. Behold, all flesh will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ, friends. All flesh that has ever walked this planet will be entirely subjected to the will of Jesus Christ. All nations will be entirely subjected to the will of Jesus Christ. All angels, all demons, all fallen angels, Every creature in heaven, upon the earth, beneath the earth, and in the ocean, and in the air, will bow and honour and serve and declare the kingship, headship, lordship, and sovereignty of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every second, friends, between now and then is just a matter of time. Christianity affords a sinner the opportunity to live in the light of the judgment seat of God's dear son at the precious time we live in now. Who can stand before jealousy? Well, Christ is the mighty victor, the glorious one that stood upon the cross for all of thee, that came out of the tomb and stood and said one of the greatest messages this earth has ever heard. Go, tell my brothers and sisters, I ascend to my Father, to your Father, to my God, to your God. The Creator incarnate, the one that spoke creation, the one that was there at creation, the word that was God, is God, and eternally is God. Very good of very good. So Christ is the head of all principality and power, friends. The head of all principality and power, whether it's governmental power, angelic power, or demonic power. Christ Jesus is the head of every man, the head of every nation, and the head over all things to the bride, the Lamb's wife, the church. So Christ was able to stand and have the victory eternal over all devils and is able to stand representing all mankind towards God as a mighty saviour, a mighty king, God's king the Lord. Now, five and six are connected. Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. <clears throat> the King James has it. Um, open rebuke is better than secret love or hidden love. <clears throat> So it's better to be clear and transparent. Elsewhere we read in the Proverbs, um, rebuke not a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him. And then in the next verse, I think it was two chapters ago, we, we look to this. Uh, Do not rebuke a fool according to his folly, lest you be like unto him. So there's a time to speak and a time to keep silent. But open rebuke is better than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Well, Christ took the kiss of Judas when he was betrayed in the garden by him to wicked men. And then, of course, Christ, by his stripes, we are all healed. By the agonies of Christ, the atoning sufferings of Jesus Christ. Christ took the wounds 
for mankind that he created and came to say was he terribly beaten and his beard all ripped out and nailed to the tree for all of the friends. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Jehovah laid upon Christ the iniquity of his old friends. I believe it's the book of Zechariah it says that men will say to Christ on that day um, where did you get those wounds in your hands and your feet and he will say unto them I was wounded they are those that I received for I was wounded in the house of my friends that's the meekness and lowliness of Christ friends those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. A satisfied soul loves the honeycomb, but to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Well, I think this is the, the dichotomy between uh, those that are materially rich, that, that fare sumptuously every day, uh, and those that are materially poor, that perhaps have to eat basic foods, um, and yet um, Elohim Yawabah will deal with every mortal, um, and you know many of those persons that live sumptuously do not particularly care to help others. They're not thoughtful. Who can I help? How can I help? Where can I help? Um, and the irony is those that uh, have lamentation and concerns, um, they are often more willing to help. Um, and it's interesting, really. It's a very spiritual verse. And of course, this is verse 7 of chapter 27 so it's the son of god from heaven in completion entirety and remember these are the proverbs of king solomon um, who is a type of the lord jesus christ in ascension exaltation and sovereign entire dominical rule over all mankind at the present time So human beings that are satisfied with the current evil age we live in, friends, of uh, wicked ray and uh, governmental deceptions and delusions um, and the legislation of infanticide, of child murder, abortion, uh, sacrificing unborn innocent children to the devil on the basis of lust, materialism, careers and self-centeredness. Um, uh, where earthly modes of communication, newspapers, radio, the internet, largely does not declare God's dear son, the sovereignty uh, and the power and the splendor and the glory eternal through which all things were formed and all things are sustained. Um, the present evil age um, has millions of human beings that are quite content with the things that pertain in their lives. They don't care for the knowledge of a dying savior upon the tree. They don't treasure the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. They don't declare God's dear son, nor honor, nor serve, nor obey him. They are satisfied and they loathe the honeycomb. So it's the it's the it's the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of equity, the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of Christ, and the mystery of the vile devile, um, the mystery of holiness and the mystery of unholiness, the mystery of saints and the mystery of sinners. 
the mystery of contentment and discontentment. These things are revealed in scripture, friends. Those that are satisfied by the things of the world and their delusion and confusion and wickedry, they loathe the very thing that makes them content, makes them content. They have contempt for that that makes them content. And so they don't seek to give it to other people. It's a mystery. But to a hungry soul, everything bitter is sweet. Let's just turn quickly, friends, to, um, to the book of Matthew. Matthew 5, the Beatitudes. And seeing the multitudes, he went upon a mountain. When he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed art the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed art the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of vile against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. To a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Of course, not in every case. There are persons that are moneyed that are very gracious and compassionate. Of course, there are. No one's suggesting that everyone that's moneyed is a wretch. Uh, but the reality is many persons that are well off financially are not compassionate and caring to, to the poor. That's the reality of it, and that's true of individuals and nations, and has been for centuries. Um, of course, the mystery of this verse is the deeper spiritual realities uh, around it. Um, I mean, if you're content, for example, you, you shan't be an overeater. If you're content, you won't be a drunkard. Um, if you're content, you won't be a sex addict or a gambling addict. Um, if you're content, you won't practice these forms of self-harm, you see. Uh, so a satisfied soul loves let me come, but to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. It's a very, very deep verse, but come, come, let us proceed. Like a bird that wanders from its nest, is a man who wanders from his place. Well, God has placed men where they are. If you're listening to this in your car or in your home, that is where God has set you. Be content there. Don't feel a need to be going here and there. Uh, the Lord Jesus said, you know not what manner of spirit you are. 
what is the impetus and the unction to go here and go there and do this and do that? The scripture says those that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So there's a sense of divine guidance and divine leading. I, Yahweh, will shepherd them myself and will lead them to streams of living water, to a place of good pasture, um, a place of peace and rest and serenity. Rather than wandering around. Uh, indeed, a, wand a wanderer, as well as a wanderer, it, it is part of the curse. Um, Cain was made a wanderer upon the earth, the first man born on the planet. Cain murdered the second man born, and his punishment was he, he had that wandering uh, lack of that disestablishment. Um, ointment and perfume delight the heart, and the sweetness of a man's friend gives delight by hearty, hearty counsel. Yeah, so, you know, we've all had that experience where we smell a beautiful perfume and it just cheers the heart. Well, that's something that you can actually spiritually, that you can have that experience in God's presence. I've had that experience. Um, the scripture says that the garments of the Lord Jesus Christ are perfumed um, and beautiful and glorious. So the kindness of a man um, gives delight through hearty counsel to other men. It's a beautiful scripture. Do not forsake your own friend or thine father's friend, nor go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. It's a, it's a very unusual verse and a very wholesome verse, having a trio of lines, whereas all the previous uh, nine verses just have dual lines. Um, indeed, just quickly looking through it, it's the only verse in the entire chapter, chapter 27. Um, verse 10 is the only verse that has three lines. Um, and it's three separate points. Do not forsake your own friend or your father's friend. Be faithful, be committed, be willing. Um, don't go to your brother's house in the day of your trouble. It's a very unusual verse. Better is a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. Very interesting. It's very interesting that a lot of brothers... Uh, I would say the majority of brothers don't get on as they ought uh, when they when they become of age, teen and twenties uh, and middle age. They they tend to not get on as they ought to, uh, and so that's why it's important to to form friendships with others. Um, better is a neighbour, love thy neighbour as yourself, than a brother far away. My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me. So that's human beings must be agreeable and wise and circumspect, possessing their vessels in sanctification and honor in order to make the father's heart glad. So when the devil comes to reproach us, uh, he's, he's, God, says, God says, well, He's standing in the truth. He's walking in the truth. He's doing his best to, to help others. Uh, and then the accuser of the brethren who's been cast down forever. The, the vile devile has nothing to accuse us of when we're living righteously and holy. And of course, that's verse 11. My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me. 
A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, for the simple pass on and are punished. Um, it's wise to seek God today, to serve, honor, love, and obey God today. Uh, remember mankind is under the curse uh, as the world and the flesh and the devil to contend with every day uh, and to hide ourselves in God our refuge, our fortress, our strong tower uh, to dwell in the secret place of the almighty um, to be hidden in the cleft of the rock to be hidden in the wounds of Christ uh, Colossians says, for you have died and your life is hid in Christ. In God, Galatians 2, 20, 21 says, um, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hey then, friends, the simple pass on and are punished. You've got to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Verse 13, take the garment of him who is surety for a stranger and hold it in pledge when he is surety for a seductress. So you have the taking of a garment and it being held in pledge. And you have a surety for both a stranger and a seductress. Well, the stranger was Adam and the seductress was his wife, Eve. The surety is the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who has obtained eternal redemption and saved all mankind. The Lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the whole world. And then you have his garment, his body upon the cross that was crucified and terribly beaten and in his own body he took all the sins of mankind and indeed became sin upon the tree for all of you and the death of christ the finished work of christ is held in pledge for all mankind truly truly he was rent upon the tree for all of the i rent friends the rending of Christ is your life and peace, friends. The agonies of Christ is your deliverance. The sufferings of Christ is the reason you're alive, the reason why your mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, offspring and neighbours and colleagues and governments are alive and operable is through the agonies of Jesus Christ, friends. Powerful words. And no, friends, 13 is not an unlucky number. That's the world for you. 13 is just something extra. One is the number of God the Father, and three is God in triune expression. That's just the way of the world. Don't think as the world thinks, friends. That's how the world thinks, in delusion and darkness and devilry. Don't talk as the world talks, friends. Neither think, talk, or be as the world is. Friends, you're in the world, but not of the world. You're in Christ upon the Father's throne. From whence proceedeth thy peace and joy and security and safety and preservation eternal. It's a very powerful verse. Uh, and it's no coincidence that it is in Proverbs 2, 7, 1, 3, 27, 13. It's all about Jesus Christ, friends. Take the garment of him who is surety for a stranger, that's Adam, and hold it in pledge when he is surety for a seductress, that's Eve. So you have the salvation of all mankind uh, in the assurance and salvation and finished work of the one whose body became a ransom sacrifice, became the purchase price, became the redemption. Uh, that is held in pledge for all mankind is of great value, precious, beloved, and accepted in Christ.
the ancient of days has come and set everything in order. God will set everything in order, friends, throughout this whole planet. In every family, in every nation, the time cometh, friends. The day is here. Today is the day of salvation. I tell you the truth, friends, and um, I know this is being released primarily on YouTube, where there are tens of thousands of YouTube videos about doctrine, and there are some of them that are very good. Um, but on YouTube, you could endlessly uh, find men and women that are saying this and saying that and saying the next thing. Um, and, you know, the apostle, to we must always come to what scripture says, friends. What does God say? What does the scripture say? Not what human things, but what the scripture says. And the great apostle Paul said clearly, that the last generation, there will be a last generation that shall not taste death, but shall physically ascend into the sky, just as the Lord Jesus Christ physically ascended. Right? Now, there'll be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of saints throughout the history and genealogy of this orb that will be resurrected imminently and immediately before the glorification and immortalization of this last generation of living, Bible-believing, blood-washed saints. And then we all ascend in the air to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall ever be with the Lord. This is real Christianity. And it's all because of the one who will laid, he laid his life down and took his life up again. The blessed surety, the guarantor, the redemption eternal for Adam and for Eve and for all mankind, the stranger and the seductress. Proverbs 27, 13, friends, an epochal verse, very powerful verse. the Lord and Saviour of all mankind. He who blesses his friend with a loud voice rising early in the morning, it will be counted a curse to him. It's a very interesting verse. Yes, if you was asleep, friends, and your friend in the next room or across the room woke up, while you were still sleeping and blessed you with a loud voice, you wouldn't be particularly happy. It's a very interesting verse. And um, I think it's a verse, it reminds me of, um, I believe it's um, Isaiah 30, 15. Let me just be absolutely sure, friends. In returning and rest shall you be saved, and in quietness and confidence shall be your strength, but you would not. And you said, no, but we will flee upon horses, therefore shall ye flee, and we will ride upon the swift, therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. 1,000 shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five shall you flee till you be left as a beacon upon the top of the mountain and as a banner on a hill. Now, in olden times, a hill and a mountain would be a place of safety and refuge because you would be able to see anyone that was ascending uh, the mountain or the hill to come and get you and you would have the high ground to throw things down at them as a last resort. Now, the cross, Mount Calvary, Christ upon the cross is your refuge in, in God, friends. And um, at the rebuke of the Lord Jesus Christ, all flesh will be silent and will be subject. The scripture says, at the appointed time, the ancient of days doth come 
and sets everything, everywhere and everyone in order. There shall be order in every place on this planet, friends. Order in God's house, because God is a God of order and not the author of confusion. Now, this verse declares, it's a beauteous verse, Isaiah 30, verse 15. For thus says Adonai, Yahweh, the Lord Jehovah, the Kadosh Yekad Hayashril, the Holy One of Israel. In returning and rest shall you be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. The last part of the verse says, but ye would not. And that's the sinful nature, the lower nature, friends, the, the part of humans that is in allegiance with the wicked ones that says, no, no, I don't want that, I don't want that, I've got to be doing this, or I've got to do this, or that, or say this, or say that, or have this argument, or cause this problem, or this little bit of lust, or greed, or wickedry. The natural mind, friends, the sinful nature, the yang, the lower nature. But ye would not. So think of that, friends, that God says, in returning and rest, shall you be delivered, shall you be saved today. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. I'm reminded of another verse of scripture, friends, and it says, contemplate upon your beds and be at peace. Be still. Meditate upon the scripture of truth. A continual dripping on a very rainy day and a contentious woman are the same. Whoever restrains her restrains the wind and grasps oil with his right hand. So, you know, the world, the flesh and the devil, the battle of the mind every day, friends, trying to work out the world, uh, the culture, the society, the influences is very difficult. Every day, men of this age, particularly those, those persons that watch television, are bombarded uh, with fictitious vanity, materialism, lust, murder, rape, violence, um, uh, financial greed, uh, deceptions and oppressions, continually in movies and television programs. And that is the contentious woman. That is... Mankind under the curse, deluded and deceived, and deluding and deceiving others. No wonder folks are so confused, friends. The narrative uh, of that contentious woman, of the, the, the effects of the first man and woman upon the earth, is culture and society that is very, very confused. Very, very confused. A generation that calls evil good and good evil. I used to do a lot of open air preaching, friends. I'm ever ready to do open air preaching. And uh, I just started 20, goodness, 25 years ago now, I first started open air preaching. And um, ever ready. We ought to always be ready, friends, at the drop of a hat to speak. Regardless if there's a million people there, doesn't bother me if all of mankind was listening. If it's the truth, it's the truth. The truth will stand for itself, friends. You stand for the truth and the truth will stand for you. You take care of the principles and the persons will take care of themselves, friends. And I, I heard a preacher and what he does is when he gets a crowd, which is difficult to do when you're doing open air preaching in the modern era, people are dashing here, dashing there, and they're not used to, you know, standing and getting a crowd. But um, there's one preacher I know, and he lives in a place where there are lots of people, and he often gets a crowd. He will say to them, you know, who thinks it's good to do this to get drunk? And who thinks it's good to do this? 
they all go, yay, yay, yay. And, and he says, and who thinks what I'm doing today is good? No, no, it's evil. And he'll say, is it good or evil? They say, it's evil. And he says, you are a generation that calls evil good and good evil. Woe unto you. Woe unto you. And it's a very, very powerful scripture. Um, and we must be very, very, very careful, friends, to observe the good, to contemplate that which is pure, noble, just, good, and upright. Um, and uh, truly, truly, this last generation is a generation that calls good evil and evil good. And that is the reality that will bring in the end of days, the final denouement, the resurrection, the ascension, the marriage supper, uh, the seven-year tribulation, the bottomless abyss for a thousand years for the doomed, deluded, vile demons, um, the battle of Armageddon, uh, and then all those that love and make lies, those that make women of themselves, all the sexual perverts, all the liars, all the wicked, uh, will be thrust into the lake of fiery, sulfurious, brimstone, and capital punishment eternally. Uh, oh, the devil is the beast, the false prophet, and the antichrist. He finds nature and expression through wicked humans that reject the Lord Jesus Christ, that reject the blood atonement, that reject the good news of life and immortality, friends. He finds expression through uh, religious leaders. Uh, like the anti-Christian, uh, false Christian cult, the Roman Catholic Church. Not necessarily, in most cases, the individuals that claim adherence to that system, but rather the priesthood uh, and uh, the uh, the Romish anti-Christian popes. Uh, that great, and it is the great lumbering anti-Christian system, probably the most wealthy, the most influential system this earth's ever seen. The combination of Roman empirical rule and attempted spiritual usurpation from the disciples whom they killed and crucified, did terrible things to, and then decided that uh, to exert spiritual uh, influence alongside temporal influence would be a jolly good idea. And the Roman Empire morphed into the Roman Catholic Church, uh, a vicious and wicked system of perfidy and darkness superstitious paganism uh, mixed in with a, a measure of Christianity deluding the masses as we speak however the reality is that there are many persons that profess these groups it's like the, the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses um, and the Mohammedans, it has to be said. There are many persons that profess those three last three groups and all those four groups have in common a gospel of works. They believe that by doing good things, they will achieve eternal redemption, eternal salvation, whilst missing the point completely that it's only through the finished work, the agonies, the suffering, the death, uh, the atoning sufferings, the atoning death of Jesus Christ, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, uh, and his sovereign dominical power as the living, breathing word of God, their source, their sustainer, and their king, their kingly, goodly Lord. Uh, and yet those, well, particularly more Mormonism um, and Jehovah's Witnesses and Catholicism, Catholics, um, they would would profess to declare these things and believe these things, but ultimately, uh, they those three groups are uh, they believe that you you obtain salvation by doing good things, whereas a Bible believing, blood washed, uh, born again saint of the assembly, a member of Christ, a follower of Jesus Christ. Um, they do good things because they have eternal redemption, not in order to obtain it. In other words, the fruit of having eternal redemption is that we do good things, not 
we do the things to obtain eternal salvation and that is the difference between the truth and error you see the religion of men is to try and appease god uh, but only christ has fully satisfied god concerning sin whoever restrains her restrains the wind and grasps oil with his right hand so trying to make sense of the world many a man has spent his life trying to affect change in the world and they found it to be just like this verse says whoever restrains her restrains the wind and grasps oil with his right hand that's why friends when it comes to the world the flesh and the devil you have to have the faith in god's dear son you have to have your faith and trust in his majesty elohim Yahweh and his son his majesty the king jesus christ alone not in self not in the world but in christ alone friends i knew a man uh, a godly man in his latter years harold his name was lovely lovely man um a lovely man he made me an apron back in the the 90s and he was quite into his cooking when he was retired and I remember him telling me friends that he, he spent decades as a trade union shop steward and he ascended the ranks of trade unionism in Great Britain. And in the decades, he went through terrible, terrible situations, companies attacking him, uh, trade union members attacking him, sometimes physically, people threatening to kill him, uh, ended up in trouble or because of uh, what they call them, strikes and protests, ended up in court. Uh, and he said it almost killed him emotionally and mentally. Um, he said it was just, he regrets it now. He was trying to, what, what was his phrase he used? Trying to tame the beast. And, and what he was trying to do is restrain the wind and grasp oil with his right hand. Um, and he said he wishes, after, after 30 odd years, he said to me, he wishes he hadn't um, spent all that time and energies in the trade union movement. Now, of course, some listeners might say, well, it's a great thing, the trade union movement. And of course, we're thankful for a lot of liberties and uh, the minimum wage, for example, that's as a res direct result of the work of uh, trade unions and, and their members over many years in Great Britain. So no one's saying there's not good things come from it. But the point is, is we have to have a balance with everything, friends. We have to be wise about our energies uh, and we have to practice good self-care. And trying to adjust the world, the flesh and the devil, friends, is only in the power of Jesus Christ that a human being can do that. You know, your battle is not against flesh and blood, friends, but against principalities, powers, and spiritual forces of wickedness in the skies. It's only through the head of all those principalities and powers that you can find strength, deliverance and victory. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Jesus Christ set his face as a flint to the cross, friends. Commitment and devotion to God for the salvation of mankind. And we do know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those that are called according to purpose. And very often God works through those around us, friends, and develops in us the nature and character of the Lord Jesus, his majesty. Whoever keeps the fig tree will eat its fruit. So he who waits on his master will be honoured. Now, this is a very beautiful verse. This is verse 18, friends. Um, the fig tree is Israel. Uh, Christ is the king of Israel and has saved Israel, has saved mankind, uh, and will eat the fruit thereof. The Bible says uh, that ye are all the fruit of his suffering, the fruit of the suffering of Jesus Christ, friends. That's what you are. Um, 
The scripture says, for the joy that was set before him, Christ endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And of course, in a practical sense, if you look after your fig tree, you do eat its fruit. Um, so those that love Israel, that love Jerusalem, have blessing. Those that hate Jerusalem and hate Israel have curse. And the Lord Jesus said, when you see uh, the fig tree blossoming, bearing fruit, know that the time is near that this generation shall not pass away till all things be fulfilled. And we know that um, the Jews said to the Lord Jesus Christ and said to Pilate, his blood be upon us and upon our children. And we know that within a few short decades after the death, burial, resurrection, ascension of Jesus Christ, that Israel lost its nationhood completely. It was already under Roman occupation. It was already under divine judgment for its rejection of Yahuwah. And when they rejected Yahusha, the Lord Jesus, that was their doom written, uh, which culminated in, in the, uh, the, uh, the gas chambers of the Third Reich uh, in Germany. The terrible, terrible, terrible oppressions and killings of millions of Jews um, by the Hitlerian regime. And then we read in Isaiah, shall a nation be born in a day? And only once in human history has that happened. Well, that was the, the formation of Israel in 1948 because of the national, uh, well, because of the compassions and loving kindnesses of Elohim Yehovah uh, through human beings. Uh, and uh, the nation of Israel was formed and so it's now one of the most prosperous financially and militarily and uh, agriculturally, uh, ag agriculturally um, prosperous nations on earth. The fruit and vegetation is exceptionally wonderful in Israel. Um, but God was already working before the wall. The Jews had started to, they had to, had to buy the land back from the Arabian Mohammedans. Uh, who who owned parts of Israel, and the Arabian Mohammedans charged them a fortune, and then mocked them at laugh and laughed at them after because it was quite a barren land. It, it was under God's curse, you see, but in God's time, and it has now become the most prosperous, vegetatively and fruitively speaking, uh, and militarily and financially, governmentally influential countries on the whole planet. The blessing of Yahweh maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Yes, the time of the tribulation is coming, friends, a time of terrible tribulation. But the saints, the assembly, were church, the church will be in the glory, in the bliss, clothed with immortality, physical immortality, friends, at that time. Whoever keeps the fig tree will eat its fruit. Whoever values the cross, Christ upon the cross. Everything dealt with, all the shame, fear, guilt, sorrow, distress and sickness of all mankind dealt with. By his stripes ye are healed. By the whipping and the beating he took ye are healed. Whoever keeps the fig tree will eat its fruit. Have you contemplated Jesus Christ today, friends? Have you rendered due worship and praise and thanksgiving to the King, His Majesty Jesus Christ today? Do you care to retain the sufferings of Christ in your thoughts day by day, friends? Whoever waits upon his master will be honoured. We read in scripture, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall Mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
And if you wait upon your master, Jesus Christ, you will be honoring the father. And whoso honoreth the son, honoreth the father also. And the father doth honor. Yahweh says, I honor those that honor me. All those that love me love life. All those that hate me love death. If any man hath the Son, he hath the Father also. As in water, face reflects face, so a man's heart reveals the man. It's a very interesting uh, scripture. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of a man are never satisfied. So that speaks of the desire of the devil for the death and sorrow of all mankind. The devil isn't satisfied with his wickedness, friends. He's ever wanting to, 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 to be punitive and harmful towards mankind. It tells you that hell and destruction are never full. We read elsewhere that the, the mouth of hell opens its mouth wide, but the mercies and the loving kindnesses and the faithfulness of Elohim Yahweh are great and new every morning. And the, the scripture also has to do with greedy, unsatisfied lust, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You have several um, threefold declarations in the New Testament. You have the beast, the false prophet, the antichrist, the world, the flesh, the devil, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. But greater than all these trinities is the Holy Trinity, the blessed and holy three, the life-giving Trinity, strength, love and power. The Father, the Word and the Holy Spirit. the blood, the testimony, and the will of God. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of a man are never satisfied. Goodliness with contentment is great gain. Are you satisfied with Christ Jesus, friends? The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, and a man is valued by what others say of him. Though you grind a fool in a mortar with a pestle along with crushed grain, yet his foolishness will not depart from him. It speaks of the awfulness of the curse of God upon mankind uh, because of men's allegiance with demons. And it speaks of um, the sinfulness of self-centeredness. Um, Yes, and the need for the atonement, the need for the finished work of Christ, uh, which is able to set men and women free from foolishness. Be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds. We need to be circumspect, circumspect about our practical circumstances, friends. We need to know things like where we are with the electric, gas and insurance, MOT and things like that. We need to be compass mentors of these things. Riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. Well, so that's a mention of uh, nations, um, their influences. When the hay is removed and the tender grass shows itself, 
and the herbs of the mountains are gathered in, the lambs will provide your clothing and the goats the price of a field. You shall have enough goat's milk for your food, for the food of your household and the nourishment of your maid servants. For some beauteous promises of the provision of Yahweh Yahire, the Lord will provide. So those last five verses are together, 23 to 27. Talking about being diligent in the state of your flocks, attending to your herds, so that's practical observation of your real time circumstances, um, for the need to be wise around finances, riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. So that speaks of the crown of all the humans that have died um, and the impermanence of, of, of temporal men. Um, but also a hope and mercy and grace when the tender grass shows itself. The herbs of the mountains are gathered in, that's the vegetation. The lambs will provide your clothing. The goats will enable you to buy a field. You shall have enough goat's milk for your food, for the food of thine household and the nourishment of your maidservants. Desire ye the sincere milk of the world, the sincere milk of the word is far better. We need the practical sustenance, but we need the sustenance from the scripture of truth. We read um, in, in John and in Peter of the sincere, sincere milk of the word. Let me just find this for you, Paul. Hebrews 5.13, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So people that are new to Jesus Christ, new to the scriptures, new to the Lamb's wife, the bride, um, Hebrews 5.13 says they're unskilled in the word of righteousness uh, and they only partake of milk. 1 Peter 2.2, 2, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Um, then he goes on to say, uh, well, I'll read the whole passage. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need somebody to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So that's the promise of the gift of discernment by staying in the scriptures. Blessed will be your discernment, friends. Then if we go to 1 Peter chapter 2, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Um, and in John, 1 John, the letter of John, we read of the strong meat of the word of God. Um, and then in the rest of this chapter, 1 Peter chapter 2, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God 
through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But thou art a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to today's broadcast, friends. As always, feel free to comment. Um, if you think I've missed anything, please put it in the chat. If you'd like to see anything covered in these podcasts, let me know. Um, so until next time, may the face of Elohim Yahweh shine upon you and your family's friends and give you peace in every way. And those that love the scriptures, nothing doth stumble. Great peace, great shalom great well-being of those that love the Lord God. Until next time, friends, may Elohim Yehovah bless you. Shalom.